Hello everyone. This is Yogesh back to the show. This time we have a new guest. Her name is Abhirami Sukumaran. So Abhirami right now has 16 years of experience in app development. She has extensively worked in the field of data, data sciences and databases. Um in past she has worked in multiple companies including IBM, Infosys and Critics. Right now she is a developer advocate at Google. Um apart from it she also has some other interests like she loves to write blogs uh, of course technical ones uh, also she likes to teach things uh, she is also a public speaker so you might find her in some fests technical fests describing and explaining how databases work and what are the options you guys have uh, to you know work with data So in this discussion of ours we have been di- discussing a lot and digging a lot about data databases how data are utilized right now in industry and how they can be utilized um and what are the things a startup should look into uh, when working with data and uh, how how can they you know fix up any issues um which they haven't thought earlier on uh which uh, which are related to data or their touring stuff so yeah there is a lot to uh, you know look into for the discussion and i i hope you will really enjoy the discussion this is a question um how was the day and how what were the things that you maybe st- uh, uh, went through in the day maybe struggling in development cycle if there is anything or anything like this how was the day in general the day yes yes the day <laughs> the day has been Well, the day has been uh, quite eventful, I would say. Reading um, all about the recent innovations um, across the industry, not just in Google, but across the industry. Reading about um, the new inventions, innovation in the field of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all that. Uh, large language models. So, trying to understand some basics, and um, that's about it. And also. uh have been looking at some of the new things um that's come out with as part of bigquery as part of as part of vertex and also um i'll probably be um working on working hands on on some of those features and you'll probably get to read them on my blog or in my um code lab which i generally share in social media so um the day has been pretty much about doing some experiments reading some concepts going back uh, to the discussions like you you mentioned that you were discussing you were learning and reading about the current advancement and everything that is happening right now in data science field and even in machine learning field uh, the data language models which are coming forward what what is your um, opinion and which one are you interested in looking for most the language model if i have to say um i'm not going to call out any particular model to model per se to say that i'm going to use this or anything because um uh, it depends again i'm just looking forward to um to uh understanding and finding more applications for business uh, okay. for the community and also for uh for the society so i i feel that there is definitely a lot of applications technology uh, technology wise um but to find real world applications to find applications that um normal people like us can relate to is what i mean outside of technology outside of innovation mm-hmm. um the real application is with the outside world and that is what i'm looking forward to so i'm just looking at areas where i can uh bridge these two things the technology exists independently and uh, there are business problems enterprise problems i'm not saying technology needs to exist independently like bringing them together patching them and finding and finding a place to use this or finding a problem to solve using these technologies is what i always look forward to so i'm just looking at implementing some of these apis to some of the enterprise um solutions that uh, or opportunities that i've been looking at so that's got it got your perspective so rather yeah, than calling out a particular model i would <laughs> so that's that's my way of doing things but that's completely fine <laughs> so i'm not i'm not saying that i am very particular in calling out the models but what really interests me is how they actually work on like for instance uh, uh, there is a way uh, how uh, image classification models work like cnns there is a way how um, transformer transformer models works uh, for generating nlp and their utility cases um, so you know those things how they do it is what really excites me and um, 
that's my way of doing things but but definitely ultimately the technology is something which is an enabler uh, for some some it has some utility and that utility is what we use in industry and uh, what society uses whether it being an um, you know maybe chatbot for instance uh, or to any predictory model which can provide some sort of uh, analysis on how things will proceed in future and things like that it has a lot of uh, strong utility in itself so uh, you know these models that we are talking about they mostly mostly boils down there are there are two major parts if i have to say although we can you know if we have to categorize what are the very essential and vital parts there are many but uh, just breaking down things very very you know uh, uh, in a, in very um, shallow manner there are two major things that i feel that goes in this overall process and analysis and predictions and models one is the data other is the the actual model which uses data learns things from it and goes forward now uh, model is something which um, which we have been discussing about data is something which i'll be very much looking forward to have discussion on uh, so on that side um, what do you think is the importance of data and uh, how did so there are, there are many things that comes with data one is uh, the way people say it and probably right as well that you require a bunch of data to get a right uh, set of uh, use utility from a specific machine learning model or uh, any uh, uh, sort of model not machine learning in general which uh, is 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 intended to provide some prediction or some analytical support to guys what is your take on data how and why it is important to whatever we do in this data science field and machine learning in general as well so the question is around what is uh, what is the criticality of, of data in uh, yes. its application yes um, i would say very it's very critical i highly uh, uh, not thought of it is the only thing it is a, it is it is a source it is a fuel it is what um, ignites the whole application itself so without data we wouldn't be able to solve uh, whatever it is that we're trying to do or with minimal data or with biased data or with um, a certain um, what do you call that certain segment of data alone we cannot solve the problem that we are addressing we need data in all its forms shapes and variety uh, unbiased and um, as much as we can justify the scenarios that we are looking at or the applications that we are looking at or in the industry that we are solving for um i think as much as we could we could we should bring in the data that that is possible so i would think um if you're talking about the field of work itself data is going to be the data is the future is the present and it will also be uh, more and more the future uh, in terms of applications that we go around machine learning and ai i mean i don't know if it's the news these days in headlines it's making headlines um there are uh, there is like um too many there are too many tools there are too many chatbots or too many assistants and all these things come into uh, play when you talk about different industries and different applications for it so all of that center around data and if you keep ai and ml aside for a second and then even just look at the core functionalities uh, the functioning of a business or the functioning of a product even for that data is very critical because there are some products which rely on the data for instance um, healthcare or um, a uh, mindfulness kind of i'm just calling some mm. examples out yeah. let's say start products that revolve around these areas uh, data is the asset there mm. you are operating on the data the product itself is mainly the data collecting the data is number one step in building your product mm. uh, because you 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 find out what to do you find out what problem to solve and what is actually the problem what are the solutions available using data so their data becomes more transactional and data becomes even uh more so the, the core of the business itself and there are other areas um let's say it's an automation field or instrumentation or areas like that where um uh, data might not be the core asset but data will be important in order to enhance your business uh, okay. or you may or for operations like monitoring your systems monitoring your uh industry or monitor i mean industrial setup right there or monitoring your applications that are running or monitoring your real time um systems like real world systems so operational use for data is there and there is another scenario where data is used for business and business intelligence 
where you use data only for reporting. Like, what can I do to improve my business threefold, six months down the line? So, there are so many different uh, avatars of data, like data being the business core business itself, data being the operations aspect of it, and data being the business intelligence aspect of it, and uh, so many, so many different avatars. So, I would say very important. Sorry okay. for the long answer. I just wanted to cover these three things that are very close to me. So in these three segments, uh, uh, I think the new emerging field which is coming is where data is the core business of the company. Like there were times earlier where data was not the core business uh, element and proposition of the company. But now with the new society coming in, the new times coming in, the way technology is progressing, there are many companies which are coming where data is the core. Even let's say um to um maybe i'll come to that part later on but uh, i just want you to specifically uh, tell what is your opinion about the way data is being utilized as a core value proposition in the company which the company is trying to provide outside uh, society and what are the implications of it uh, good side as well as bad sides uh, you mean with example some examples of the implications examples of or patterns which you can see in the industry right now anything which can you know describe and explain the the way things are progressing and uh, the good sides of it and bad sides of it uh, i'll start off with the bad sides first because to, according to me uh, it, it's uh, i can address those quickly that's very short in list mm. uh, very small in list so i'll just address that first uh, in my opinion what I think is uh, data by itself has no downside to it. Um, what I would think though is the downside is the way it is being applied, the intentions with the data and what uh, business applications or what application it is being used on and how it is impacting the security, privacy and um, you know, local laws and uh, you know, uh, consideration. So these are the things I would think uh, that one need or one or business needs to keep in mind when they are designing or de applying the data itself for the product. But otherwise, see, even before data and its application started existing, these downsides were always there. There was crime and there were other means of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, there were other physical means of doing it. There were other uh, monotonous, uh, non-technology-based ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. Now that it's... The technology is evolving. The downside of it is also evolving, just like in the business. So there are newer ways to uh, to implement that, uh, implement those attacks or or uh, in, or use data in a negative way. So I think those things will continue to exist if the person uh, privacy and security concerns are not addressed properly. So that is always going to be there, um, as long as it's as, as long as it's not addressed properly. So that I would think is the downside. And um, the other part was, how is it being, how how is it being implemented for the like, what is the benefit, good. what are the implications? Yes, good yes, good okay. parts of it. I think that has taken a giant leap in terms of how industries um, have evolved using uh, data or have evolved over time, like how data is presented to the users or what applications are available to the users. Mm -hmm. I think I think it has improved and evolved over time. And with technology, the usage of data has only uh, has only been proving really useful. I would say uh, because let's take I'm again going back to the example of healthcare or uh, like mental healthcare or mindfulness because I think that's a quick thing that I can think about when it comes to usage of data. In, or, or even diet for that matter, using data to plan what is right for you or giving you a suggestion using artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning to understand your pattern, to understand you, your health uh, goals and your health benefits and all and your health status as of now and preparing a chart for you. And I think those things are, um, those things are essential. I, I mean, of course, yeah, there is always a, um, I, I wouldn't say downside, but there is always a question of is it right or um, is it 100% accurate? What is it that's going on? I mean, of course, that is going to be there until um, until there is a time where we can 100% say that uh, AI and ML can be like 100% accurate. But un mm. until such time, it is still useful. Uh, let's take it for the use case of like understanding one's behavior, understanding one's mental health, uh, providing recommendations for that. Um, so all those things like workout schedules or workout patterns based on your style, lifestyle, based on your um, 
um, based on your body type or whatever your requirements are, matching matching what is available with what you have or what you want is something that's phenomenal. That's just a basic example I'm saying because everyone, irrespective of what they do for a living, irrespective of uh, what profession they are in, this is something that everyone can relate to because human body and mental health is really important for everyone. Yes. So yes. I'm just, I'm just yes. taking this example to say how much of an improvement data can prove um, I mean, data and this application can prove resourceful if it is used in the right way. Uh, this is just mm -hmm. one example, but uh, there's so many other applications in the field of medicine, in the field of um, uh, other industries, for example, banking, um, insurance, and whatnot. Got it, definitely. Uh, thanks for bringing up the. I, I assume you really um, are uh, very much interested in the field of how data will impact the. Uh, the healthcare industry if, uh, that is how that is one of the example that you provided very you know repetitively iteratively it's correct correct it's not just about it's not healthcare i think healthcare probably is a very we have to be very careful when uh, we talk about those that particular industry i mean for that matter every everything yes, needs to be careful right. or carefully vetted out but the use case that i'm taking is a small segment in healthcare it is talk, talking about mental health or uh, physical exercise being fit or um, a diet, a nutrition and diet uh, plan or creating. So these are some things that we can all relate to in a day-to-day -day life, irrespective of who you are or what you do. So that's why I take that example very so often also as well. No, definitely. But if I have to share my opinions on this, I'll maybe probably take some time to share my uh, thoughts on this. Um, what you mentioned is a way to say, that's the right way to say and. Uh, I'll be very much excited to share the things that we are doing here uh, in our, at our side. Um, Dieter Show, to guys who don't know what Dieter Show is, Dieter Show Lab is a company who provides uh, metabolic insights. In general, what, what it means is we provide the insights on how, you, how your food is reacting, how your activities are responding to you, what are the things that you need to change in your lifestyle to uh, get in better and optimized healthy, if I have to say in very bare language in general. But before that, me going into that field, coming onto the health health segment in general, the way I see here it is, there was initial time when we uh, were just basing when when the experts were basing their opinions on what they what kind of uh, symptoms they can see on person, which they have learned, which again isn't data. If I have to say, you have data, you learn data, you you know, figure out patterns and you share that recommendations to them. Then some advancement happened and we had more granular data. Maybe some reports came in. Uh, with those reports, we are able to understand person's health better, the signs which are not good on them, the issues that they are facing right now. Then we went more into detail. Now we are able to analyze very, very uh, critical and sometimes things that not have happened. Maybe let's say a person might have a long-term cancer issue, but you have been able to pre-diagnose that issue right away in the short time. Now that is also something which happens on data. Or let's say uh, a person can become diabetes in uh, example, just an example, can become diabetes in uh, five to six years based on what his current health body is. So we have data. We uh, try to uh, you know make data more. We try to understand data. We try to bring. We try to bring more data in a more granular way. And we, we were able to diagnose the person's health better and provide the right recommendation. Definitely experts, not us, but that, 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 the basic understanding is we, you have data and you have been able to do that. Now comes the, the maybe this phase of time when what is happening in the, in the industry, especially the kind of innovation uh, from the, the, the uh, area which I'm able to see is now things are going into the personalization side, like things you have mentioned, where what diet really uh, you know is good for you and bad for you uh, how diet if impacts you is is health real is the exercise that you are doing is really uh, helping you or you need to make some changes in exercises or maybe even time uh, so these data are coming and these data are more personalized to a person which is providing more uh, strong analytics on how a person is how a person is responding to events and activities which are um, uh, which are happening in a short term and is able to deliver some feedback to which she or she can change uh, himself. So, you know, that there was a quote that was mentioned by uh, 
Thomas Alva Edition. Definitely, I don't remember the quote, the whole quote, but the the crux of it is is the in the long term the society will go from an uh, you know treatment kind of uh, way of uh, medicine or uh, recommendation to preventive thing. So people won't go to doctors to get them treated, but people will know beforehand that there is something wrong in them and they need to uh, change something to get uh, to to ensure that they don't get that disease so the way i am able to see right now what is happening is the personalization part is coming in but in the long term the healthcare industry in general uh, as we bring in more data will be able to bring more granularity on how a person is behaving it can be of because of multiple reasons the demographic they have uh, the, the the genetics uh, the you know the past parental and uh, before that con conditions as well or uh, um, the lifestyle they have how is it impacting them these data will uh, come more in and you'll be able to uh, get uh, maybe better healthcare support in general and that is happening because of data this this overall improvement if I have to see from a uh, top side view is happening because of data and how the data is being interpreted that's that's my opinion and uh, overall maybe not right now there's a strong implication as such, which we are discussing about, uh, but there is always a sudden, sudden, you know, shift towards what it is. And there's a, now a new trend coming in wherein you have data. Uh, initially, we had less data. Now, after this AI thing came into picture, we have big data. We have lots of data. We are able to find strong patterns, which otherwise is very hard for a human to figure out. And we are working on this. So, uh, long story short, what I, what I mean to say is there is. Uh, there's an increase in the, the amount of data which is used in the healthcare industry. Uh, the, utility, the utility right now, I think, in my opinion, is more of an, uh, more going right now in, in terms of innovation is going in terms of getting the personalized data into picture. But the long term utility is more than that. Uh, even, you know, preventing something or uh, understanding something is wrong going to happen if things are not taken care of and improving on that segment. And it will, in general, will have a very huge impact on healthcare industry, which is because this is something which is very, very uh, important to us because everyone likes to be healthy, want to stay healthy. So that's that's one thing. Sorry for taking that much time, but that's that's my opinion. Uh, right now, data privacy is a new concern which has evolved in society. Um, and But data is very, very relevant and required thing to improve the analytical tools as well as AI models which are present right now. What do you think how these uh, ad things should be addressed and how much uh, big of an issue is it in, in your new understanding? The privacy things? Data privacy, privacy things, yes, yes. No, like I, we discussed this in the previous question as well, yes. uh, like what is the downside? So if there is, um, if there could be a downside possibly to the evolving um, applications and implications of data and uh, analytics, and AI and ML, it's it's the just the privacy part uh, predominantly. So what I would think is um, um, that is the first thing that everyone as it, it should be addressed as part of the design. It's not okay. an accessory. It's not um, it's not a feature that you want to discuss towards the end or talk about. Okay, now that the product has developed, what are the pending items that I need to? It's it's not an operate. It's not just it, it is an operational item, but it's it's not something that you think about after. Uh, after creating or after you, after building your product, it has to be it, it has to be engraved in it right from the beginning, uh, ingrained in it as right from the beginning. So I would think it, it is part of the design, uh, privacy considerations, security considerations, and uh, other regulations should be part of the application design or the product design. And I think that is um, it, it is that critical. In Got it. Opinion. So in in what in your opinion again, what is uh, what do you think are the best uh, design approaches an, an organization should take when they are building up an application or, an, or an, an use case which relies heavily on data, which can have data privacy concerns. What are the things that you feel are needed to be taken care of when designing the whole architecture? Uh, there is a lot of things that we need to consider, like from a design perspective, business perspective, requirements, functional. Um, and also from the perspective of um, uh, technology design considerations. So design considerations usually, the, the technology aspects and the design considerations usually um, cover these things, privacy, mm -hmm. uh, local regulations, 
or uh, data localization restrictions mm -hmm. um security uh, data storage related uh, regulations that you have mm -hmm. um archival strategy so all these things are covered as part of the design mm -hmm. so there are many other things like what is the type of the data structure of the data what is the necessity what is the use uh, use case for that particular data like what else can you derive out of it even okay. So you should think to the level of uh, derived applications that could potentially cause a threat or that could potentially cause um, a privacy issue or something like okay. that, even if it is not a threat. So we should be able to thinking uh, able. We should be able to uh, think on those lines, not mm -hmm. only from the perspective of not only from the face value of okay, these are all the privacy restrictions. This is PI. This has PII data, or this has uh, healthcare, healthcare information. Or this has um, identity, other personal identity, or mm -hmm. this has anything related to the finance uh, information or finance data that needs to be protected. So it's not just that, and whether it's GDPR. So those are all a given. Those are all okay. mandatory ones that you have to the list. But beyond that, um, the, the, the architect or the the solution team that is actually working on the architecture or the solution, uh, even before that, they need to vet out like what are the possible derived um, forms. Or shapes that this data could uh, could enable. Like, what are the different uh, reports, or what are the different um, uh, what are the different aggregations or summaries that you'll derive out of, out of this data that okay. could potentially cause a threat down the line? Or if you're designing so say, encryption, what is the level of encryption that is needed? Um, or um, if you're so every phase of the application design, not just the entire overall overview architecture, also up to the level of user interface. Like um, uh, information exchange at whatever level it is happening, I think at every level in the architecture we need to we need to have this ingrained. Um, so that's 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 at a high level I can say. If you want to call out any specific like these are the list of items, I have written a blog around not specifically on privacy. Some of the design considerations for your application or database, I'll share the link. Uh, I mean, if you're sharing the link, you sure. can probably find that. Sure. That's the first. First of the blogs uh, in my page, so you can definitely take a look at that. It is first of the database series as well, because um, it's all uh, that is the first thing that I wrote about when I was writing for databases. So yeah, take a look at that. That has some pointers, but it's not necessarily entirely about privacy or uh, security. It has other aspects of design as well, but I would think this will fall right into that. Sure, we can even explicitly provide that uh, link as well, so that they can directly go into that link and see the contents. So uh, let us assume uh, a scenario where, because this might be, see, uh, when people start, in my understanding, sometimes they don't keep all the aspects in consideration uh, on how to handle data very well. When then companies scale, then they start facing issues, then they have to do a lot of revamp sometimes it also in mean it sometimes sometimes it also means that you are uh, for some certain amount of time uh, holding your uh, you know uh, you are holding your services that you are providing to customers because you need to make some changes at your side to get things done right so some and, and these things happen so what do you feel if uh, these uh, if there are some issues on how the data uh, the, the operation uh, which was uh, made in the this architecture which was designed to handle data was not right. How to make it uh, right somewhere uh, if they are in maybe in scaling phase or a phase when they are providing uh, maybe a general phase where they are providing services to, the, to their customers and they really need to change those aspects which are not working right now well. So I would say this will be a scenario where um, we would call it like I told you so. Like it's it's a space where you have to start thinking about why didn't we think about it at the beginning? Earlier. So I, yes. I I would say when it comes to application design, now this is not my direct answer to your question. I'll come to the answer, but I would sure. before that I want to emphasize on the importance of uh, design thinking or thinking ahead of time. Like we have to design for scale uh, scalability. We have to design for what will the shape of or the or the form of this application or product be. Uh, three years down the line or five years down the line or even one year down the line if there is a sudden increase and in hike in the traffic of your application or product what are we going to do so we have to plan out these things and like i said before coming back to the topic of privacy and all these regulations and these things which are which are really important security related things which are really important for your data uh, it is not just about the architecture that you need to look at you need to look at the things that are not so explicit uh, for instance the network layer, 
like every single layer of your application of product needs to be addressed when it comes to designing for security designing for privacy or inclusion or that matter at different layers there will be different requirements and there could be leak at any layer at any level so you need to have a team that can look at all these aspects before you use data or before you uh, apply this data or provide any kind of an output with exposing any any kind of data that you uh, that you are allowed to do or that you want to do uh, and again the reason i'm bringing this up is because i did not cover this in the last question i wanted to but then um, I, I yeah i just got distracted with providing the link and talking about it but also this is really important to focus on security at different layers now coming back to this question uh, yeah proactively designing it for uh, designing at scale is a thing and that is what we should plan for that should be plan a and uh, there should be no plan b if that is okay. correctly done okay right but now <laughs> let's say things happen anyway because yeah. it's not always yeah. perfect it's not always a perfect world so let's say that there are, we have a scenario where things happen and we'll have to go back to changing your data this this has happened like forget about uh, an enterprise scale application even startups they start thinking that a certain database is appropriate for them at that point and 6 months down the line when the app is still not even live or it is live with a let's say few hundred thousands or few thousands of users they realize that this is not the right choice and they'll have to switch the database to something else and again that involves time and all that um but yeah i would say if you are at that stage make use of some open source utilities that will really uh, not impact the security or other other aspects of your application but it will enhance the process or that will um expedite the process of migration and again when you're doing that make sure you're planning out for a future where the scale scalability and uh, all the performance attributes and everything uh, related to the design and uh, delivery and operational attributes of an application product are met make sure all that is met but you can definitely use all these utilities like there are migration tools if you want to change a database and all that but if you want to do that at that some point again i would say go back to doing the design um, evaluation again go back to doing or answering questions for design aspects and then use all these utilities that you can like migration tools are there if you want to switch the database or if you want to switch the technology under the application the under the hood so all these things are possible um so yeah a test driven development could be something where you where you catch all the things that you probably missed out on earlier so now mm -hmm. you have more knowledge and more experience as to why uh, you cannot approach a certain thing in a certain way so yeah definitely i would say go back to waiting it all out but uh, uh, yeah back proactively designing for a uh, long term positioning of your product is definitely much uh, preferred but there are migration tools if you want to do it at some point down the line that's definitely true but uh, i'll kind of share in startup perspective kind of thing so so uh, maybe before coming to that question maybe the more relevant question will be uh, we have in current industry two ways of managing data okay we have uh, servers which can manage data for us so managed databases then we have uh, other way of managing data which is self uh, management of databases which where we have our own servers for databases and uh, we have some servers instances maybe physical or maybe again cloud based and we uh, store data there and whatever services are required to be uh, provided we provide from there so uh, what is your opinion which one is better and which one uh, which one a person or an organization should choose or uh, if uh, if there is uh, a, not a right answer to which to choose and which not to choose then what will be the parameters on which pe uh, people and organizations in general can decide which to choose and which not to choose if i was able to you know explain my question well so this is a very no you, i understood your question but this is a very um, open ended question i mean this is a question that requires a lot of attributes and lot of uh, you and a like it cannot be one sided answer mm -hmm. um, because there is no one size fits all answer to this question right yes. no from no no organizations will have the same parameters to say okay uh, they use cloud based databases or cloud based applications and so we all, we'll follow suit and we'll do this no that is not uh, how it has to be decided it has to be decided on several parameters as to what your uh, vision for the company is what role does technology play in your uh, in your overall business goal or business growth um, how much of it uh, how much of it are you allowed to bring it to cloud there are certain questions that you need to answer 
uh, when it comes to the way your business functions and your geographical restrictions that you have or any local restrictions that you may have so all these things are there and again besides that um if you say like okay a company once you have decided or addressed all these questions and you've decided to move to a certain uh, one way or the other mm-hmm. let's say a company decided to move from on prem to cloud um then again they need to if you want to justify that or if you want to answer questions around like is it which is the best solution for me or uh, okay. what can i uh, what can i say that uh, what, what will my business benefit from this like uh, is there going to be an impact in the return on investment is there going is there is there going to be a direct impact in the roi uh, for the company if they move from on prem to cloud so those are some okay. of the questions that we need to answer but definitely um definitely there is a, the digital transformation has been positive and there is i mean i'm not saying that every company should be saying on prem if that is what their business demands no but uh, looking at uh, digital transformation and looking at the impact it has had on several companies across industries i can say that it is it will be a good move for any company if they decide to move uh, from one what they have from a traditional uh, setup to a cloud setup or traditional databases to um what we have what is relevant to them right now from the options that we have i'm not going to say any particular technology or any particular database i'm not going to call that out because i don't want that to be a prescribed solution for them it, it has I to mean, depend on what requirements they have and what business uh, functions that they are expecting the technology to solve for them so yeah mm-hmm. uh, those are things i'll say but again going back to the design attributes those should drive uh, the reasons for why you need to move from a specific setup but if you ask me uh, i would like to answer this question in a different approach like what are the advantages of the digital transformation then i would say scalability for one of course you don't have to manage your infrastructure the cloud providers and the providers of the technology that you choose to mm-hmm. operate on will take care of that for you like if you're going for google cloud uh, services google is going the google cloud platform is going to take care of um, uh, maintaining scaling it out Uh, the underlying network the underlying infrastructure so all those things are taken care of for you you don't have to spend your time building those things rather you can focus on innovation focus on growing your business focus on delivering the solution and the application to your customers rather than focusing on maintaining these things apart from that cost you only pay for what you use you you grow and you pay as you grow rather than uh, um, you know having a fixed uh, deposit of infrastructure that you need for every month you need to pay yes security and other aspects uh, for the for the most part all the basics are covered for you you will only have to think about the customization for you that uh, that that applies to you and all that ai ml there are ready made solutions if you don't have a team already up and running um, so that will be a good one for you um, and you will also have uh, support from these kind of services that will enable the customers of your products to uh, to benefit from your solutions rather than just your own team uh is it i mean in addition to just your own team mm-hmm. so there are so many advantages of the digital transformation so i'm not going to say uh these are the things that you will gain if you transform but if you choose to transform digital transformation is definitely proven valuable for many organizations that have already done that got it uh, i understand your perspective so there's there's a there's a kind of uh, thought process which i have i have heard in industry which i would like uh, to bring forward and i would like to know your opinion on this uh, data privacy right now is a very very uh, especially in data science field and even for people in general like apple spends a lot of you know efforts in ensuring the data privacy part is taken care of uh, mm-hmm. apart from any other any other competitors which they have so there is this there is one perspective which has been kind of holding uh, big giants uh, and maybe sometimes even small i can't say but big giants not going into this cloud based approaches wherein they are not handling the data, data themselves rather they would prefer to handle data by uh, they are not handling the data uh, to the big companies like amazon google uh, rather they are preferring to you know keep the data by to themselves on their physical uh, warehouses from which this whole uh, you know getting data and these things can go on what is your opinion about uh, uh, this thought of not shifting to uh, these uh, providers uh, given all these advantages uh, and uh, yes just let me know what are your thoughts on this and uh, do um, yes please that's that's the first thing i'll, I'll ask to you yeah 
So you're saying that uh, there are companies who prefer to keep the data in house or keep the things infrastructure. Yes, or, yes, yeah, because they focus. feel that data is very sensitive and they don't don't want uh, the possibility of their data being exposed outside because. Uh, the way these cloud-based companies works is they have lots of data. You know, they, they have physical spaces wherein they store data of their clients and they store data of multiple clients in the same place. Let's say if something happens or some uh, some maybe technical issue happens or some breach happens or let's say their uh, warehouses for some X Y Z reasons goes down, they are they are at risk. Uh, so they are at, they have a dependency over someone else, and if the data gets exposed. Um, they are liable to answer their clients for apps. So what is your opinion on this? How do you see this scenario? Um, I would think, I, I, I believe that there are use cases where um, that will be a, that will be a demand. I mean, that will be a re re requirement that they cannot use anything else. They want to keep it all in house. I understand that. But again, there's always trade-offs. Uh, whatever, what works for you is Which important, is but I would I would say location, see, confining your data to a specific location will also cause a problem. Like what if there is a disaster? What if, how will, what is the plan be like? How is recovery going to be handled? So mm -hmm. there's always trade-offs. Like if they know that uh, they have, a, they have branches across the world or across the country or across the city, I don't know how it's going to be managed, but if they have backups across the place, how are you going to main, ma make sure there is integrity across data um, around the globe or around the city that they have the data stored? And and uh, like what what if there is a disaster in one place? Like how are you, how are they going to recover? So there's a lot of questions around it, and there is always trade off. I mean, these are just small examples I'm giving. There are other problems too. Like uh, if you want to release a feature, or if it's even if it's a geolocation specific feature, uh, how are you going to handle that with data uh, located data being localized to a specific place or data being stored and maintained by your own um, areas? Like there's a lot of things that are dependent on this. Um, again, the infrastructure cost will continue to grow if this is how it is. But again, having said all that, there could still be exceptions uh, which are highly sensitive and can never leave the room. And I understand why. Uh, so yeah, there's always trade-off. If your business demands it, then go for it. I'm not one to say, no, the solution will definitely fix all that. No, but again, you will have to understand if that is that makes sense to your business, then go for it. And um, that is what I'm saying, evaluating all these things, evaluating what the service provider has to offer for you and knowing your requirements and knowing your limitations up front will help you address this. And uh, there is no right or wrong, but I would say that would comprise about 15 to 20, 25% of use cases overall. I would understand there are use cases, there could be use cases like that in defense or uh, in some, I don't know, uh, I, I can't think of anything else that would demand something, uh, something that... Uh, sensitive um yeah there could be scenarios and it, it is it is okay if that is how it needs to be made but if it is for the purposes of uh then that is that is something that can definitely be optimized with experts or with consultants who specifically or even the service providers itself themselves okay. provide calculators and optimization recommenders like in google cloud you have cost calculator where you can upfront know um what is what is the what is the total amount that you're going to spend for the services and for the regions that you're going to configure it for? So all mm -hmm. that you can plan out. Even if not, there are recommenders for optimizing your cost. Like something is, if you're using a particular service and you're not using a committed user discount, Google Cloud will uh, recommend you give some uh, automated uh, recommendations for you, which is driven by ML, uh, AI and ML, of course, and it'll tell you hey, you're not utilizing this discount. Why don't you offer it? Because you've been using it continuously. So mm -hmm. all that based on your pattern and everything. So definitely there are ways to balance out your cost if cost is a constraint. But if that is not, if there is any other specific reason, then I think to each their own, uh, they'll have to come up with a set of aspects and answers to the questions that are already there. Yes, um, thanks. Uh, thanks for the opinion on this part. Um, th because you mentioned about Google Clouds, a question that really popped in my mind uh, right now is, uh, there are multiple use cases for data and uh, you know um, one thing I think cloud uh, based companies do very well like Google for instance and I am right now myself referencing Google more than Amazon here is because I have 
uh, myself worked quite extensively on the architecture of Google, so I understand uh, things over there. So one of the things that these cloud-based companies do well as well is they uh, they understand the kind of data uh, the person uh, organization might have and can provide services based on them. Okay, like for instance, just in just in a rough uh, overview of things that I can recall, it is let's say if you have a data which uh, which uh, you normally don't use, it's it's a chunk of data which is a sort of cold uh, thing for you. You don't normally pick it up. So you have a specific warehouse and ways to store data there. Like if you have data wherein it is required to be cold again and again and instantaneously, quickly, you have a service available for that. So they have all those optimizations wherein uh, based on what kind of, what is the nature of your data, you can uh, choose what kind of, uh, you know, where you want to place the data and things like this. So what is your opinion on this and how do you see this uh, overall thing? Uh, maybe provide some examples on how uh, cloud service companies share, store data and what kind of nature of the, those data are. If you can you know, shed some light there. So that's a detailed topic, but I'm gonna just um, touch on some key words and things that, um, that I find useful. Yes. Uh, it depends on the type of your data. Let's take tabular format data or semi-structured data for that matter. Okay. Forget mm -hmm. about our structure for now. Let's just talk about these things. So you know um, what kind of data that is coming in, whether you want to store in tables and columns fashion, or you want to have semi-structured data where you want to deal with indexes and uh, documents uh, or key value pairs. Mm -hmm. So you know how you want to store your data and how you want to handle it. So that comes as part of the design and that comes as part of the requirements of the foundations of your business like what is the format of your data that is coming in that you're going to deal with in your application now once you come in you need to address questions around what is the storage strategy are we allowed to store in a specific location uh, do we have a, a single region or multi-region requirement or if you're storing it across the globe uh, for a specific feature to be run in a specific uh, location um, are we storing it that way the latency is reduced so that the performance of the application the performance mm -hmm. and the traffic of the application is not facing a delay uh, the performance is really good so all those things need to be addressed in order to for you to know which which region you need to store and also the compliance related questions privacy security uh, regulatory guidelines all those things come into play uh, to decide where you want to store the data how long you can store the data and if you're taking backups where can you store the backups or how long you can store the backups apart from the transactional data, uh, or if you're using it for analytical purposes, are you going to mask your data or is that enough for the um, security restrictions or privacy restrictions or guidelines you have uh, for that particular requirement? So all those things need to be addressed even for storage because transforming them, masking them, doing all this ML on them is secondary. First part is yes. storage. Data management yeah. is more critical. Um, everything else is its application. Whether you do mm -hmm. it with big data, whether you do AI ML on them, whether you do reporting, all that is secondary. The primary part is storage. So I would think that's a very vast subject on its own. Knowing your your nature, knowing the nature of your data, uh, knowing the storage related design aspects of your data, and knowing the security and other aspects of your data, and knowing the how all these come into play for your overall architecture and how this plays out to your application and to other when I say application, the product, your product, and mm -hmm. the applications for that data is, is really critical. For mm -hmm. that, uh, and there is unstructured data for that matter, which is in the form of files, like images, videos, and all that. So how much are you going to store and what value are you going to derive out of it? Where are you going to store it? Are you going to store it in a separate like blob storage or cloud storage? Cloud mm -hmm. Google Cloud has G, right? Google Cloud Storage. So I'm storing my images in a bucket in Google Cloud Storage. Um, so am I going to store it and retrieve it on a daily basis or hourly, or it is going to be once in six months where I just need to reference, like, for example, there could be applications that I require other, uh, an other card verification, right? For that, you're storing yes. an image. I know it's a poor example, but I'm just saying that, sure, but this please. is on, this is on demand. It's not, uh, you don't know how much transactional that application is. It's not like it's a high traffic application. It's going to be probably one or two in a day. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the duration, what is the frequency of traffic, what is the frequency of uh, access, um, and, or if it is just for archival purposes and you're going to reference that data only in terms of, only in question, um, in, in scenarios where you have questions, like going back to verify or having a paper receipt, 
going back to, uh, to check your receipt or whether you have submitted the proofs accordingly. So that will be once a year. So those things are not required to be, you, you don't have to pay for access or operational costs like very, every so often, right? You only have to use it only once a year. So you have storage uh, options for unstructured data like coal line storage is there, archival based storage is there, uh, hot storage is there. So you'll have to choose whichever works for you. Um, there are Google Cloud offers databases uh, for all of these categories, structured, semi-structured, unstructured, indexing based and in-memory databases. Um, and other and support for other open source databases too, like MongoDB and also for um, Prometheus and all that, and also provides operations monitoring on top of that. So it's a, it's a vast topic. We can keep talking about it, but I just wanted to call these keywords out. Um, so if anyone's interested, they can go back again to the blog, which I have. Um, uh, it's a seven-part series which talks about in, uh, different databases, and uh, it has applications that are implemented end to end using a specific database in each one of the blogs. So if you're interested, uh, you can also go and check it out. But uh, these are some of the keywords that I wanted to touch on to address your question. Sure, uh, definitely. Thanks for this, um, this thoughts and these keywords that you mentioned. They definitely are helpful because um, these are a few of the things that I think every person who uh, who wants to uh, maybe see, like maybe in, it can be an architecture guy who is trying to figure out what really works for organizations, but is not working for organizations or even organizations in general, the teams, if they're working as a team, uh, they're able, to, they're trying to figure out what is really working for them, what is not working for them. They being able to go through those contents and things and understand those integrities will definitely be helpful out there. So um, my next question uh, that I want to place forward is, um, I would like to know how the database, database has been evolving throughout the time. Uh, if you can you know, shed some light there uh, so that we can understand from where it started, maybe perhaps some from some from a specific timeline in past to where it is right now. What what is the pattern you are seeing there? If you're talking about evolution of database or evolution of um, uh, even before the word the term data was coined, uh, this I'm not going to talk so much in history, uh, but yeah, there is something that's interesting that I found that I've read somewhere is that. Um, we use something called the Ishanga bone, um, or what is assumed to be a notched baboon mammal's, um, mammal's bone, um, kind of like a tally stick to do some mathematical engravings or something where we recorded uh, numbers and things that they wanted to remember in the future, right? They wanted to keep a track of a record of. It's about 20,000 years before the present day. So that is like identified as the oldest mathematical database. I mean, I could be factually maybe wrong, or I don't know, but I read it and I found it fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. I speak about it or I talk about it in a couple of places as well because it's something that uh, intrigues me. Uh, 20,000 years ago, we had a concept uh, of storing something, storing numerical information for the future use. Okay. Um, or, um, they used some mammal bones to record these things, and that is what the origin of storing data and stuff like that. And then about, uh, we had a lot of other applications, right? We had uh, calculators, computers and all that. And eventually we started having, um, of course, Google search that is that was identified as an important event in the evolution of technology. Um, of, of course, we had uh, about 52 years ago when database management system was evolving. Uh, we had the 12 commandments or thir uh, 13 rules of databases, right? Of relational databases. Like what are the things a database should uh, satisfy or what are the rules a database should follow in order for it to be a relationship what we call the chords rules right so all those things evolved during the like 42 years ago and then around the time when it's i think in the 60s slowly we started having some sophisticated modern time databases uh, and then we had specific database like relational database for um for for the overall product or the application to evolving into a stage where we are right now, where we have databases for different aspects of the application. Like you have trans, uh, you have transaction-based applications for the functions of uh, the product itself, or the func functionality itself, and then for transactions and all. And then you have databases that satisfy the uh, needs and analytical use cases. And then there is uh, semi-structured data and the other forms, right? Like for analytical and transactional, maybe you have relational databases, uh, structured database. And then there is semi-structured databases for different purposes. Within the same application of product, you will have more than one database or one kind of database 
for different purposes uh, within the product itself. So yeah, we have evolved from writing numbers and things in bones and sticks to having one database for an all-purpose database to now where we have uh, one database for each purpose. So I think it continues to evolve. And what fascinates me is the application and the twist and turn it takes at um, in different walks of life and in different real life use cases. Um, so yeah, I think database is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Sure. So there's one uh, fascinating thing that I have been able to capture from the journey that you have described is initially we had some sort of crude way of managing database. Then when uh, systems and computers came into picture, we went on to more uh, organized and, uh, you know, large way of storing database, some, some standards like we discussed. Then, uh, and that was something where we are storing everything uh, into a database. Then uh, mostly tabular, if I'm not wrong, just correct me if I'm wrong there. Then uh, now we are coming to a places wherein we are feeling the requirement of uh, putting data into some specific databases which are specialized in some ways. Like there are some databases which are uh, specifically meant uh, to provide more, um, uh, you know, speed in terms of, uh, let's say, querying. Then there are databases which are supposed to provide more uh, efficient ways of storing. Uh, obviously, it depends on the use cases, but these databases have evolved because we had different requirements and we wanted different use case, different uh, um, solutions for all these parts. So that's that's something which is there now. Uh, with and also the, the evolve, and also uh, to match the evolving formats and evolving complexities in data, our databases also have been evolving. So yeah, uh, ideally, if we have to summarize my answer, starting from just having a stick to store numbers, we've gone into having one form of format of database for just the relational uh, structured database mm -hmm. to having databases that satisfy different purposes and different structures, formats, and different um, use cases and applications of the database itself. So. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. So so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, I would like to, you to throw some lights on um, how data processing happens in warehouses, especially for analytical purposes and all. What are the steps involved? And why data processing, or maybe maybe um, data pre-processing more than data processing is important to actually uh, do it before analytical things or maybe recommendation thing that you want to do. What is the importance they hold? Okay. Uh, data pre-processing, this is a very interesting topic for me because whatever application you're talking about um, for uh, data, in terms of uh, business intelligence, in terms of uh, transactions, or even in terms of um, uh, machine learning or whatever it is that recommendation that you mentioned, um, you need to you need to process your application or sorry, you need to prepare or process your data in a way that it uh, even is eligible for all those requirements or functionalities that you have. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you want to, uh, data can be in any fashion, right? Uh, like if you want to observe the, uh, for example, let's say you're analyzing cricket data uh, from the cricket, the, 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 the sport, not the insect, right? Uh, so if you want to capture the movement, if you want to capture the motions of the team or the, the images and the visuals or the stances that the player is, um, that, that belongs to the player or a specific player or a specific uh, point in the game itself, so if you want to analyze all the data, it exists in the form of unstructured uh, input. It exists in the form of images or videos or recorded sessions, right? Um, or in some cases, files like commentaries, commentary tracks or written blogs about the game and all that. So if you want to consume that data, take the key highlight, the key pointers that you need. Let's say this is just a very comp this is a very complicated example because I'm talking about converting unstructured data and it's using the data and converting it into an and yeah, you know, into a format that can actually be useful for you to analyze it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, taking that input and considering a data warehousing solution, like either use BigQuery, um, or doing some transformational logic before that, and then getting it into your analytical system to do further analytics on top of that to provide the recommendations around um, if this is the player, if this is the bowler, and this 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 batsman would be the ideal one to face, or okay. if this is the this is the style of bowling that will actually be the best for this kind of facing the um, ball right now. Who's in the pitch right now? So that and I'm just throwing, thinking out loud. I'm just throwing ideas. So if you want to make recommendations or decisions like that, 
to your data to be prepared in that fashion. So converting something that's so unstructured in a in a format. I'm not saying you have to convert it into a structured format because nowadays, uh, I think the sky is the limit for um, assistance and recommendation engines or um, engines that will actually convert uh, the format of data that they consume to provide suggestions and recommendations. It could be anything. Like you can think of a recommendation engine or something that can take in in the format of structured data, or they can also take in in the form of semi-structured data, depending on what how your design is, and then provide results. So, but ultimately the point is the transformation needs to be there. So the pre-processing and cleaning the data, preparing for what is actually necessary, um, that that takes up about 80 to 85 percent of the actual application itself. So if I have to do an ML-based um, application, for instance, um, I talk about this application a lot. Like if there is a uh, customer support or a recommendation um, text con text to label conversion um, solution that I'm building, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to make sure the data is cleansed, the data is clear and uh, sufficient enough for me to la even label the data, for, mm -hmm. for me to even label and so if you're talking in terms of um, um, machine learning, or if you're an application which involves data science or machine learning, then of course you need to be talking about labeling and all that. So for your data, for, for your data to support that, it first needs to be complete. So how are you handling that? How do you know that your data is complete? How do you know that there are no, like there are no nodes in your data? How are you going to handle excess data? How are you going to handle outliers? For example, if there is an age criteria and you suddenly have uh, some junk characters in it, how are we going to handle that? So these are all very detailed level examples, but I'm just saying there are so many steps that go into cleaning your data, preparing your data, uh, completing your data. For instance, uh, address formats could be different for different locations in the world. Right? Mm -hmm. How are you going to stack, for example? How are you going to make sure your data is prepared? Um, so all these things are comprised into what we call the ETL or ELT, depending on what uh, framework or what kind of an architecture you're going to use. Um, there are different steps. So I would say starting, like the, remember the uh, confidence that I discussed in one of the previous questions we had, um, yeah. like after there is a whole transformation cycle, yeah. or transformation is confidence. So that is where all these things come to the picture. Um, you have to, once the data is ingested, that is where you talk about the entire ETL layer or the ELT layer. And you also talk about, um, this is where your big data comes into picture as well, um, which also takes care of all the data cleansing, preparation, all the transformation that you have. Uh, if needed, integration with external third-party systems uh, or other system, external systems. And then if needed, preparing the messaging uh, services that are required for your uh, downstream applications. So preparing all that will fall under the, uh, the transformation phase itself. Um, and then once that is ready, that is when you can actually think about the next phase, which is in the first example that I gave, that is um, analyzing or providing recommendations for your cricket uh, game analysis, or um, providing uh, labels for your uh, unstructured, sorry, for your um, unstructured data. Let's take unstructured data. It could be files, right? You could have files of information. Now you have to convert that into labels. You have to do machine learning on that and say this uh, text block or this file corresponds to this label. This file corresponds to um, say apples, this file corresponds to oranges. So if you want to categorize, if you want to label them, then you need uh, all these transformations done, data cleansing done and data prepared. Otherwise there won't be consistency across how you're analyzing. This is one way of looking at it. Um, so yeah, so the, it is very critical. And I would say um, 80, 80 to 85% of uh, the entire cycle, if you're if you're looking at uh, how it how important it is, I'd say 80 to 85 percent of your time in building an ML solution goes into actually cleaning and preparing your data for the rest of the pieces. So from out of my personal experience, um, because it's how well you know the data, how well you prepare the data, and how well you uh, understand the dependencies and um, the all all the test cases. I would say like all the cases, positive and negative cases, to get a good result out of it. So it is very critical. Um, thanks for uh, providing that uh, sort of uh, extensive information on how this is important and why what it actually goes into get getting the data prepared and the scenarios in it. One thing that really uh, you know in, uh, kind of you know brought up an interest in my thought is you earlier somewhere in the middle mentioned that um, 
we normally require structured data to pass into, into let's say predatory models like machine learning models so that they can make sense and figure out patterns there but then you also you know brought up this point of um, nowadays we can also do it with unstructured data as well if you can shed more light into it how is it possible and what really goes into the understanding of how this actually how this process works of getting uh, some analytical or recommendation or maybe uh, some some sort sort of uh, predictory support from unstructured data from models and things like this yes um actually that is not correct it's not i don't think this what i said initially that uh, only structured data can uh, we can run only machine learning models on structured data that is not okay. right i don't think i mentioned that, that is that is something which i mentioned that is something which i mentioned uh, you tried uh, to create not, that unstructured I, I, yeah yeah actually you can do machine you, you can do models or you can do analysis and analytics on any form of data mm -hmm. depends on depending on what your use case is um what is the kind of database um, that you choose to support it what is the kind of uh, solution uh, ai or ml solution that you choose to solve that or what model you use to get the results that you want that might differ but you can run ml models on any format of data depending on what it is like you can do image based um, predictive analytics you can do video analytics you can do text analytics speech analytics audio analytics you can also do um, tabular structure is also one of them definitely uh, but yeah for sure you can do all these things um, so it has always been there what i would have wanted to say is there are apl database applications that uh, traditionally supported only structured data like bigquery used to support traditionally structured data but now there is support for both uh, for for all three uh, structured and semi structured and non structured data mm -hmm. so that support is what i'm talking about okay. um, like you can use it to do predictive analytics or you can do um, like pattern based analytics on uh, any format of data these days it is not necessarily just structured data okay got it got the perspective um, okay thanks for sharing the perspective on this side I guess these are a few of the questions that I had. I don't know. I know they were not still less, but yes, these were the few of the questions. Let me know if you have if you have any specific question that you want to maybe write, ask. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll be very happy to uh, answer if you have anything that you want to ask. Um, you no, know, I just want to add uh, that there are some blogs uh, in different areas that um, yeah, is available in my uh, website that I can provide. It's Abhirami dot dev, a b i r a m i dot dev slash blogs. So and um, yeah, and also the homepage has my socials if uh, anyone's willing to stay connected or discuss about data databases and other technology. I'm more than interested to talk and connect. Sure, that is something which they can definitely do. Uh, they should do if they're really into databases and want to learn things uh, more detailed way. So that will definitely help. So thanks, Abhirami, for being here, discussing these things, and uh, you know, uh, having these great discussions, um, understanding things from you. It was really nice. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Nice. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah.